Live from San Diego, the studios of WSRadio.com. It's Alex Cosper with Sam Kadura. Hey, it's what's always, up, Alex? How hey, are you? It's always fun doing this show because you never know who's going to be on. Yeah, we've had some great guests in the in the in the past. Yeah. And you, I mean, you have. Yes, this sev- is your show. Several have been from 91X, <laughs> and this week will be no different. Oh, really? <laughs> Explain. Rob Tonkin did promotions at. 91X long, long, long ago, and now runs his own business called Marketing Factory. You can find it at marketingfactory.com. It's a music marketing service. How would you describe it, Rob? Is it is it more? Are you more of a concert promoter or a music marketer? I would describe it as a creative agency for brands that uh, helps them connect with music and culture. Okay. And that includes the Honda Civic Tour, which has been going on since 2001. And so what does that mean? H- how are you involved with Honda? Well, we are their music agency, and we have been for about 18 years. And um, that sort of has, has evolved, and in, I'd say way back in, in 2000, uh, we were approached by their ad agency, and they asked us to come up with an idea uh, that would be quote unquote non traditional advertising. And being that I sort of had a lot of ideas already baking in my head, um, I went off after a sort of impromptu meeting at the agency and came back with uh, this idea of the Honda Civic Tour a couple weeks later. And uh, about eight months after uh, going through sort of various rabbit holes between the agency and different departments at Honda, um, they greenlit the program, and and, uh, we did it in 2001. Awesome. So you had, what, the top people at Honda in America saying this, or or who did you have to go through? Eventually it was... Uh, blessed in a meeting by what they they the guy who was in charge of all their a- national advertising um, at the time and he was his title was like AVP of advertising national advertising a mm-hmm. uh, guy named Eric Kahn and it was kind of a funny meeting because I was in with the ad agency and some of the other uh, advertising managers and I remember he um, you know, kind of took some deep breaths in the meeting, and there was a lot of consternation. Honda's a very conservative company. They they were very concerned over. I, I would have never doing guessed something that. Like <laughs> uh, they yeah, seem I like mean, a they, progressive, you know, futuristic company to me. They are progressive technologically. They're very innovative, but they're still conservative in and uh, in their market and they're. Yeah, they're you know they're they have a um, they have a certain ethos and you know they the I will say the founder was very much a Steve Jobs like person you know very charismatic mm-hmm. so Shiro Honda who I've never met and and um, I never had an opportunity to meet him I think he probably passed away even before I started working for Honda I don't remember what year he passed but. Anyway, he, you know, he's kind of the person that was very much bigger than life. And kind of the three tenets that we were working under is something youthful, something innovative, and something that would be very exciting. So mm-hmm. those three tenets kind of created the concept of Honda Civic Tour. Okay. And anyway, in this meeting, what was funny was he described a story of some artist where she lost her blow dryer and they were doing something in the middle of a halftime of a football game or something that Honda had sponsored a college game. And I think the artist might've been Christina Aguilera. I don't recall. And he just, you know, said that it, they couldn't get the artist to go on and this and that, and it was a different thing. And that was the story. He said, he doesn't want those phone calls. He doesn't want to have to deal with that. <laughs> so I made the mistake of saying, don't worry. It's turnkey. <laughs> to which he sort of looked up at me and said, there's no such thing. <laughs> and 
Um, and then the other now, thing right? was the the <laughs> the uh, band that we were presenting was Blink 182, mm -hmm. which um, they were your first band, you know, right? The yeah, and they were definitely you know sophomoric humor, but a lot of f bombs and a lot of you know skin mm -hmm. and fun, and you know all in good humor, but pushing the envelope a little bit. So I think you know that made them take a step back, and then of course. I explained that they had played fairs, like uh, they had played the Central California Fair. Um, I don't forget what you call it, what the name of the fair is, but um, and we had a letter, you know, from the fair referring them that they'd they'd played for family audiences and so forth, and it was just kind of funny. Um, we were we were very concerned about this, so the, when when I knew that Honda got it was when he also looked up at me when the agency was kind of going through these things. Well, the, you know, look, they've played family, blah, blah, blah. And I had kind of coached the agency on that part of it. And he looked up at us and he said, look, if we have to censor the act, we're not doing this. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, okay, this guy actually gets it. <laughs> and, and then he greenlit it. And, you know, with the idea that we're not going to censor anything, um, you know, we're going to be cautious and and uh, make sure that everything, you know, is to Honda standards, but at the same time, the band is the band, and, you know, we'll get behind it, and we'll do what we got to do. San Diego so band. Cool. Did it did The fact that they're a San Diego band, Blink-182, did that have anything to do with you having close connections since you worked in San Diego radio? Not really. Um, you know, it's funny, I have... I mean, I, I worked at one point for Bill Silva, who mm. kind of managed them at the very beginning. Rick DeVoe, um, who is also from San Diego, was their manager for many years. Um, and I got to know him, actually, after the fact. I kind of met him briefly with, with through Bill, uh, but didn't really know the band at all, um, but got to know them very quickly. Uh, and there's another st a funny story. Um, we we went we actually did a photo shoot with the, the custom car that they did the first time, and we did the photo shoot in San Diego. They didn't want to come to L.A. to do it. They wanted us to come to them. So <laughs> we were brand new at the time. We said, okay, we'll we'll accommodate you, and we did it um, at this studio. The guy that used to do a lot of stuff for 91X, um, a guy named Lenny McGill. Mm. who had, had a sound stage and um and it was kind of funny because uh i see travis barker coming down the hallway and um like really what stood out to me was his belt buckle because mm -hmm. he had a giant cadillac belt buckle on and i thought to myself that is not going to bode well um and so, in a nice way, I tried to get him to cover the belt buckle, and he was not having that. Um, he pretty much was a man of his word, and uh, and that was his thing. And so, uh, fortunately, we didn't get the belt belt buckle in any of the shots, but <laughs> it was kind of a funny thing. And, of course, that created some sweat beads. So, that was kind of fun. Well, and me, it was shot in San Diego. Yeah. Well, let me go through a list of bands who have played the Honda Civic Tour since 2001, and that same year you had Everclear. Uh, so other bands since then have been Incubus, Newfound Glory, Good Charlotte, uh, Maroon 5, Black Eyed Peas, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, All American Rejects, uh, Paramore, Blink-182 again, My Chemical Romance, Linkin Park, and Incubus in 2012. Uh, in 2013, Maroon 5 and Kelly Clarkson. 2014, a Group Love and Portugal the Man. 2015, One Direction. 2016, Demi Lovato and Nick Jonas. 2017, One Republic. And last year, Charlie Puth. So you've had a lot of big names. We've been all over the, m <laughs> all over the map. Yeah, all, all over the music map, like pop, rock, soul, uh, just about everything uh, in that realm. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, how do you well, how do you decide who who gets to be on this tour? Um. 
you know what what made the decision probably in 2002 was a lot different than what makes the decision now. Um, back, the, that back then it was record sales, I bet, album sales, or or Pol- It was a lot of airplay. Mm. It was MTV spins. And it was. Star. Um, yeah, po- it w- I mean, we still we still tracked um, ticket sales for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's still a, a you know a big metric. I mean, we we generally we evaluate somewhere between twenty and say twenty five different variables, and we have a kind of a weighted reporting. We do our own research, you know, from a lot of different sourcing, and then we sort of triangulate that info and we rank the artists that we're interested in and now you know popularity is really gone by the way of streaming and uh followers you know it's Mm -hmm. how big is your fan base but you also have to do a little bit of testing to make sure the fan base is not fake Mm -hmm. um yeah i I know what you mean spotify and then you got to boil it down Again. Oh, Spotify has been accused of all kinds of fake streaming stats, but go ahead. Well, also, you know, even within, you know, Twitter or, 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 oh, yeah, I or know. Instagram or Facebook, fake, you know, fake are likes, these paid fake for, yeah, yeah, are I they bought mean. fans or are they real? And then we analyze, you know, are they in the U.S.? Because while Honda is a, is a multinational company you know based in tokyo um it it also is uh very much uh operates autonomously in each territory so the company that that i work for is american honda motor company Mm -hmm. which um is u.s only Mm -hmm. there's a separate company in canada and while there is some connection in all of north america um they have plants in mexico they have plants in canada and then they have sales operations in all these places as well but it's kind of pockets you know throughout the world um they're they're very different in their structure they're not they're decentralized versus Mm -hmm. say toyota from my understanding is is much much more centralized Mm -hmm. in the way that they operate Mm -hmm. so you're only dealing with american uh executives like the senior VP of American Honda says on your website, this is a quote, uh, that uh, your campaigns deliver and track your programs to auto sales. What exactly does that mean? Do you help sell cars? It's not our ultimate goal, Mm -hmm. but we actually can measure what are called matchbacks, which is probably the most boring thing you could probably <laughs> think of, but <laughs> they do have the ability, when when we register people, we can actually buy their address and, um, and so forth. We can see whether over time they've actually registered uh, a vehicle licensed. And so that information it's called a matchback, which okay. basically allows us to to credit uh, a sale to this program. Wow! So, do you get like commissions off these sales, car sales? Now, we're w- all of what we're doing is what's called upper end of the funnel. So, we're at the top of the funnel. Okay. The the, the objective is really, um, well, the advertising sales funnel. Yes. Okay, okay. It, you know, we're we're not. Our job is not to, you know, take people onto the dealer's lot or get them to go to the Honda website, per se. Our job is really uh, imagery and perception and, um, you know, changing and increasing the coolness of Honda overall to, you know, the millennial or Gen Z Mm -hmm. uh, age group right now.